We have a, a really special guest today uh, for our morning session. His name is Dennis Miller. Um, he's the president of Dennis C. Miller Associates. He works with many of you in the room, many nonprofit organizations uh, that want to develop a more cohesive board. He provides inspirational leadership. He's done that to me personally. Um, those that want to create greater levels of success, you know, work with Dennis. Um, during his 30-year career, he has served as CEO of Somerset Medical Center. He's also vice president at Bergen Community College, one of our largest county colleges in the state, if not the largest. It's the largest. Um, he's a sought-after motivational speaker. He's a facilitator, consultant. He's also an author. Um, his first book, A Guide to Achieving New Heights, The Four Pillars of Successful Nonprofit Leadership, and his second book, Dennis, you know, he, he doesn't rest, this guy. Um, the second book is At Your Place Setting, and it is The Nonprofit Board Therapist, A Guide to Unlocking Your Organization's True Potential. Um, I've read both of them, they're excellent, and I, I encourage you to read this one. Dennis is not only a great friend and colleague, we're really thankful to have him here today. And I was a little bit worried, Dennis, when you were not here early this morning. <laughs> After seeing you last night in Manhattan, I thought he was out in Manhattan all night at this <laughs> premiere. So um, please let me welcome the biggest Rutgers University football fan <coughs> in New Jersey uh, and my friend, Dennis Miller. All set? Thank you very much. Thank you for, uh, for inviting me to Horizon Blue Course. I appreciate it. John, two things about the video, though. All those large styrofoam cups, was that a prop? I, I've been in that room with Jonah, and I never saw those so many stolen fire. I do do a lot of speaking around the country and um, at conferences, board meetings, and uh, board retreats. And one thing I always write on top of my notes is speak slowly. Born in Jersey City, I always speak very fast, speak with my hands. And John told me outside, he was Dennis. He goes, Bristol, we're running behind. You've got to speak really fast. So he kind of threw me to a little loop. Um, the second book I wrote is about uh, being a board therapist on tapping your organization's success. And I'm going to talk a little about on a philanthropy side. So let me talk about two things here. I want you to imagine this at a development meeting for your organization. The development chair calls the meeting to order and wants to review the fundraising plan for the year. And it goes something like this. Well, let's talk about having a gala this year. Um, who shall we honor? Anybody think we can honor? How about the golf outing? Anybody think we could chair the golf outing this year? How about the wine tasting? How much will it cost? And how much can we raise? And then the development chair, um, who had already passed out a whole list of pros prospects for each of you to review, says, all right, how many have you contacted the prospects on your sheet? And what happens is dead silence. The development chair says, OK, let's table that for next meeting. Let's talk about the table settings. <laughs> Sounds familiar? Oh, yeah. Why is that? You ever feel like your board members would rather stick pins in their eyes than raise money? <laughs> is that, isn't that true? Why is that? Why is that true? Who, why is that? Anybody? Yes? They don't like to keep hitting up the same people over and over again. Both okay, don't like the same people. What else? Why do people, why do people want to stick pins in their eyes? Why? <laughs> they don't want to be rejected. They don't want to be rejected. Don't we really have unrealistic expectations of our board members? Then we think, oh, great, we just got the president of the bank on our board. Or we just got the vice president of business development from the major pharmaceutical company on our board. Isn't that great? Do we know that they know anything about fundraising? Don't we expect that they know? 
Is it often the case that we don't know about fundraising? We expect them to know about fundraising? I think it is. What is the 10 cup theory of fundraising? I, I'm going to tell you what the 10 cup theory of fundraising is and how we move to the investment theory of fundraising and the difference. Anybody know what the 10 cup theory of fundraising is? I want to pick up my friend Michael. I see Michael every day over at one of the Westberger Mental Health Center, great guy, colleague, chairs the nonprofit advisory board at the Bergen Community College. Does a great job. Michael, thank you. When I was a little boy, uh, my mother used to take me to see the Christmas show at Rockefeller Center. Everybody go to that one? Little kid, you've been now? Then now you can buy tickets on Ticket Try. Then you had to put your clothes over your pajamas because you had to stay outside in the line. <laughs> and in front of the Port Authority was always the guy with a tin cup with one leg selling, selling pencils. Looks like begging, right? He didn't realize later on his driver picked him up, took him back to Long Island North Shore, and he lived in a big house and had his leg hidden in a box. We perceive fundraising as begging. Do we not? You talked about rejection. Board members don't want to involve this. Feels like rejection. It'd be the same thing like telling your young son, son, it's time to get married. I want you to go out to the mall and ask someone to get married. Would that be realistic? Maybe. <laughs> we expect our board members to know how to do this. And I tell you the following. I think board members have very little confidence in knowing how to raise money. We expect that they will. I, I, I did a, uh, a, a workshop for a client. I remember this about uh, seven years ago. They wanted to raise money on uh, New Jersey. I won't tell you who they were, what county they were in. And um, I asked them if they could tell me their top two achievements. Very quiet. Woman finally raised her hand, says, uh, we did our budget on time. I said, no one cares. He said, uh, what else? She said, um, we only spend 6% of our money on fundraising. I said, no one cares about that either. Finally, a woman in the back says, we do a program for children. I said, tell me about that. It was domestic violence, sexual assault. I said, uh, it was called PALS in a piece, an alternative learning system. He said, tell me about that. It was very impressive. I said, how do you communicate that? How do you communicate that? And the board chair says, you know what? I tell you the truth. I admit that we do a really uh, poor job communicating externally, though I think we do a good job communicating internally. I wasn't sure it was well internally. So I said, well, if you don't communicate your achievements, how would you get somebody to invest in you? Now, the reason I think that most board members would rather stick pins in their eyes is, A, because they absolutely have no confidence in this, yet we expect them to do it, absolutely terrified of rejection, and this looks personal. So the mindset I think that we have to change, and I hope all of you will change as you are currently partnering with Horizon Blue Cross, one of the the best company in New Jersey from my point of view. By the way, I am insured with Horizon Blue Cross and I have been for many years. I think if I wasn't, Jonathan wouldn't have had me here. Is begin for the first time to talk about something different at your board meetings. Now I know my time is short, we're gonna have a panel discussion, but I think there are about five important questions for your board to know about fundraising. What do you think the first question is? Not to put you on the spot, I'll tell you what I think the questions are. <laughs> Number one is, can your board tell you what's the value you provide to the community? That's not a heavy question. When's the last time your board had a meeting and on the agenda says we're going to talk about the value we provide to the community? Anybody have that lately? Anybody? Raise your hands. You did? What did you talk about? We talked about 
about PR and letting the, uh, like you said, not everybody inside understanding what we do, but the people in the community as well as in the state. Wonderful. Anybody else? What organization is that, by the way? State Theater Project. Wonderful State Theater Great. Anybody else? I'm sorry. Yes? We didn't actually have that particular discussion, but what we routinely do with our board is we have a discussion focusing on one of our programs by one of our program officers talking about the impact that's having on one. one. Okay. Number two, everybody should know what your top achievements are. We have a tendency in the so-called nonprofit sector to not think about achievements. We think the work is good enough. It's not anymore. Not in terms of if you're trying to raise money. The world has changed dramatically. You know, last year was the first time in history, U.S. history, that total philanthropy dollars went down. But something else changed dramatically in the American mindset. They started to focus specifically on giving based upon outcomes and results for the first time in U.S. history. Number three, can you measure your success? What are the measures of success you have as an organization? What are the results you have? What are the outcomes you know that you can talk about? How comfortable are you as an executive, as a development officer, as a foundation, as a board member, how comfortable are you talking about your value, your outcome, your results, your measures of success? And last but not least, why are you worthy of a gift compared to somebody else? I know I have you all mesmerized, people taking notes. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm boring you to death or you're just trying to figure it all out. But those are the questions. How many of you in this room can tell me your board members are very comfortable answering those questions today? How many people tell me they know it? Huh? Well, see, my point is this, is that board members, most of them are business people, and they understand investment. And the mindset we have had for so long in our culture has been the tin cup theory. And then we wonder why it doesn't work, and then we do it over and over again, which is a sign of, what is that the definition of? <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? And then we hire, well, you know what, we've got to get a new development officer because she didn't work out. <laughs> or he or she leaves because why? Because the board doesn't help out, right?